Are you just jumping into Steven Universe or looking for all the show's major plot points? We've got all you need to know. Get ready to jump into the world of the Crystal Gems right back at episode one. I'm Chris Carr. Here's your crash course in Steven Universe. This crash course will mostly focus on the major plot points of the show, so we won't be getting too much into the everyday politics of Beach City or the intricacies of various fusions. If you like that sort of video, go below and let me know. And before you explore the seasons with me, I definitely recommend SU newbies go check out my Gem War video. That'll fill you in on what a gem is, the Gem War, and more. For fans who want the skinny on the seasons, let's dive in starting with season one. Season one. In Beach City, the Crystal Gems live in a beachside temple where they protect humankind from monsters and other unworldly threats. These ageless alien warriors project a sort of holographic image from their core or gemstone. The Crystal Gems at the start of the series consist of Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl, and Steven! Steven is a half-gem, half-human kiddo who inherited his gem from the leader of the Crystal Gems, his mother Rose Quartz. Steven inherited his dope-ass last name from his wannabe rocker dad, Greg Universe. Season 1 focuses on Steven trying to use his powers, train, and truly become a crystal gem. We're slowly given bits and pieces about the gem's history, like how the gems are essentially refugees from a massive intergalactic empire. In present day, Steven and the gems visit ruins that were of great importance to gem culture, and they come across monsters and artifacts that were corrupted as a result of the gem war, a fight waged between the crystal gems and the gems of homeworld. These corrupted creatures can no longer maintain a rational, humanoid form and instead turn monstrous and essentially rabid. Don't worry, Steven. I'm sure someday you'll figure out how to activate your gem. Yes, in your own Steven y way. Amidst Steven's missions and training, he comes across a lion in the desert. The lion turns out to have been a companion of roses and seems to possess magical abilities, like the ability to warp and have infinite storage. This lion comes with hammer space! Steven will later find a videotape from his mom hidden in the lion's mane with a sweet message about how he's amazing and how he's going to be so great and how she's happy she made him. This leads to a beautiful scene between Greg and Steven. Any opportunity to catch Greg waxing poetic about his lady love is truly worth watching in this series. I know Greg seems like a flake, but I really enjoy him. I get why Rose was into this incredibly human human. Anyway, Lion will also retrieve Rose's scabbard from Strawberry Battlefield for Steven. Lion's like the Oprah of Rose's related stuff. You get Rose's stuff, you get Rose's stuff, everybody gets Rose's stuff! During this first season, we see some awesome giant woman fusions. That's right, these super geodes can meld together to heighten their powers. Pearl and Amethyst form Opal, Garnet and Amethyst form Sugalite, and Steven and his best gal pal Connie come together to form Stevani. Uh, do you? Know who I am? All you wanna do is see me turn into <gasps> a giant woman. Stephen learns more about his powers as well as the other gems, like how Garnet can calculate the events of the future, or how he has healing spit, which he uses to give Connie 2020 vision. Pearl gives Stephen a magic mirror in the episode Mirror Gem. Stephen learns that a gem, Lapis Lazuli, is trapped inside the mirror. Stephen releases her, and she attempts to flee Earth by stealing the planet's ocean and fights with the crystal gems. Steven, in true Steven fashion, befriends her rather than fight her and heals her and her damaged gem. Thank you, Steven. No prob, Bob. It's Lapis. Lapis peacefully exits Earth, leaving the ocean with it. When she returns to Homeworld, however, she's forced to go back to Earth with Peridot and Jasper. By season one's conclusion, we know that thousands of years ago, the Gem Empire intended to eradicate all life on Earth in order to incubate new gems. However, Rose Quartz led the Crystal Gems in a rebellion against this plan, and that the Homeworld Empire has its sights on Earth once again, as Gems Peridot and Jasper come to Beach City. They reveal that Lapis Lazuli showed the Homeworld that the Crystal Gems were still Earthbound. During this time, Garnet is destabilized and diffuses. Steven, now knowing that Garnet is in fact a fusion, meets her two counterparts, Ruby and Sapphire. Obviously, our kiddo has a ton of questions about this, and Garnet will get to all of them in the episode The Answer, so just hold your horses. Jasper convinces Lapis to fuse with her as Malachite to defeat the Crystal Gems, but Lapis double-crosses Jasper and drags them both to the bottom of the ocean. The Gems destroy the Gem Warship, but not before Peridot escapes in a pod somewhere on Earth. Uh, hello? Steven, I got your message. Are you okay? What's going on? Season two. On to season two. Steven discovers Peridot's empty escape pod in an abandoned field. The gems uncover Peridot's location, but she escapes them, and Garnet and Steven discover a nest of forced fusions created from bits and pieces of shattered gems. We couldn't have known they would do this. This is where they've been. All the ones we couldn't find. They've been here the whole time. We learn more about Greg's relationship with Rose, and consequently, the gems. As he tells Steven of seeing the fusion of Rainbow Quartz, that's the gem that emerges when Pearl and Rose fuse, and his own attempt at fusing with Rose. 
Why are they still dancing? It, it didn't work. Yes, it did. What? It worked. I think this one's my favorite. Later, Stephen discovers he has the ability to enter the consciousness of others and realizes that Lapis Lazuli is trapped and suffering beneath the ocean. Meanwhile, Garnet and Pearl fuse to form Sardonyx in order to destroy the homeworld communication hub Peridot had prepared. But Pearl loves fusing with Garnet so much that she starts lying about subsequent repairs. This lie obviously causes a huge rift between Pearl and Garnet. Garnet separates into Ruby and Sapphire and opens up about feeling betrayed by Pearl since fusion is something so special to them. Garnet and Pearl are able to forgive one another just in time to capture Peridot, who once again escapes. So, fusion is super special to Garnet? Heck yes it is! And she explains exactly why to Steven, telling the story of how Ruby and Sapphire met, formed Garnet, and became members of Rose Quartz's rebellion. So, what was it? The answer? Love. Wow. I knew it. Peridot is eventually captured by the Crystal Gems, and Steven makes it his mission to get Peridot to become a Crystal Gem and teach her how wonderful Earth is. Peridot moves into the beach house bathroom and reveals to Steven that a massive cluster made up of thousands upon thousands of shattered gem remnants has been incubating beneath the Earth's surface and is set to form and destroy the planet. Peridot, there's no way we can stop this thing in the Earth on our own. We need the help of the Crystal Gems. Our guy and gals make use of Greg's family farm, turning it into a base to build a machine with Peridot's help that can stop the cluster. This brings Peridot closer together to the gems, and she actually finds herself wanting to befriend and impress them. The, uh, Peridot. Thanks. But you're still a nerd. I'll be sure to add that to my notes. The team, with Peridot, travels to Homeworld's base on the moon. There, Peridot reveals that Homeworld wanted to colonize and wipe Earth of all its natural resources. Understandably, everyone freaks out. Completing this colony would have meant the extinction of all life on Earth. The Homeworld gems are like Galactus! Only instead of entirely eating the planet, they leave an empty husk after soaking up all its goodness. Now things really click to Peridot. So much so that she confronts Yellow Diamond, denounces the deeds of Homeworld, and officially joins the Crystal Gems fray. And consequently, has a mental breakdown. I can't blame her. You're a crystal gem! Season 3. In Season 3, the gems defeat Malachite on Mask Island and heroically rescue Lapis Lazuli. While that's going on, Steven and Peridot travel into the Earth to the Cluster, where Steven successfully contains this WMD. Then, a squad of rubies arrive on Earth to retrieve their General Jasper, but the gems trick them into leaving after playing a game of baseball. Seriously, that happens. Lapis Lazuli decides to live on Earth. She joins Peridot in the barn. At first, Lapis has a really hard time connecting with Peridot, who is incredibly eager to win Lapis's friendship. Steven aids in Lapis's earthbound adjustment, and Lapis eventually warms to Peridot. Peridot. Are you okay? <laughs> in B-plot town, Greg and Pearl are able to finally settle their differences when it comes to Rose. Both of them were desperately in love with her, so it's only natural that they'd have some issues with one another. Especially since the physical aspects of Rose and Greg's romantic love led to Rose no longer being able to exist as her own entity. That's gonna strain things between folks. So truly, this is a big deal. You know Rose. She, she always, always did, did what she wanted. wanted. <laughs> Steven's powers continue to grow. He develops the same floating ability his mother had. Steven and Peridot both develop new powers! Peridot basically becomes Toph and can manipulate metal, and Steven's mental powers increase. He controls his buddy Lars at one point, and has a unique dream ability that seems to connect him to his mother via his gem. Steven learns more about the gem war when the corrupted centipedal draws out what happened prior to its corruption. He reunites centipedal with the other corrupted gems. Connie, who's been getting sword fighting lessons from Pearl and is crazy good at it, gets to go on her first crystal gem mission and encounters Jasper for the first time. Jasper, it turns out, has been building an army of corrupted gems. <laughs> hey Rose, look what I got. The gems take action against Jasper. Amethyst gets her butt kicked and is nearly shattered. That is, until Steven and Connie fuse and form Stevani. You guys won? Amethyst! <laughs> You're back! You're okay! Amethyst takes this defeat personally and trains with Steven to become even stronger, and both learn new abilities while becoming closer friends. Later, Steven accidentally releases the gem known as Bismuth from her bubble inside Lion's Mane. Bismuth reconnects with the remaining crystal gems and forges new weapons for them. But this happy reunion is short-lived. As I mentioned in my Gem War video, Rose and Bismuth didn't agree on one of Bismuth's latest creations, the Breaking Point. The Breaking Point was a weapon capable of shattering gems. 
When their fight escalated, Rose poofed and bubbled away Bismuth and hit her away, claiming that Bismuth fell at the Battle of the Ziggurat. I know she's a rebel leader, but shady lies come super easy to Rose Quartz. Ugh, the things you do for revolution. You bubbled me away and didn't ever tell your friends. I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them everything. Then you really are better than her. Stephen, learning the reason for Ben Smith's imprisonment, bubbles her again. This time, though, he explains where she is and why to the Crystal Gems. Back to a powered up amethyst ready to settle the score. She, Stephen, and Peridot track Jasper back to the Beta Kindergarten. Amethyst and Stephen form smoky quartz for the first time to take on Jasper. Trying to counter their fusion, Jasper attempts to fuse with a gem monster, but is no match for Amethyst and Stephen. They showed up on their little ship acting very angry, so I put them in timeout. The Rubies once again return to Earth for Jasper. Amethyst, disguised as Jasper, convinces them to take the Crystal Gems to Homeworld's moon base. Upon arrival, Eyeball, as Steven named her, he names all of the rubies, confirms that Rose Quartz shattered Pink Diamond. So, Steven now knows that his mother wasn't just the leader of a rebellion, it appears that she's an assassin! The Jasper disguise doesn't fool the rubies for long, and the rubies attack our heroes. Sardonyx knocks the rubies into deep space, and whoops, they also kick Steven out there too. So Steven and the rubies are basically just reenacting gravity. Despite their differences, Steven rescues Eyeball from floating around into the nothingness. However, Eyeball spots Steven's gemstone. Believing Steven is rebellion leader Rose Quartz, Eyeball tries to shatter Steven, forcing him to toss Eyeball back into space. Eventually, the Crystal Gems find Steven, save him, and yoink the Ruby's roaming eye ship and travel back to Earth. Once landed, the gems confirm for Steven that Rose did shatter Pink Diamond and defend their former leader's actions. She didn't always do what was best for her, but she always did what was best for Earth. Season four. So naturally, a huge thrust in season four is Stephen grappling with his mother's actions. His mother's a war criminal! What the hell, mom? Stephen examines a strange recurring dream of his, despite Garnet warning him not to delve too deep. Greg agrees to help Stephen look further into this dream, and it takes them to Korea. Once there, Blue Diamond abducts Greg. Stephen and the gems travel to the homeworld's human zoo and go to rescue him. While they're gone, Lapis, Peridot, and Connie are left in charge of protecting Earth. Shenanigans ensue. So we all have to do this together, for love. Steven would have had a better speech. I know, she didn't even cry. While an unfused Sapphire and Ruby along with Pearl go on a tour of the facility with Holly Blue Agate, Steven goes to find Greg in the zoo. Amethyst befriends the Amethyst guards and bonds with them through their mutual disdain for Holly Blue Agate and the fact that they're Amethysts, and they work together to smuggle the gems, Greg and Steven out of the zoo. Prior to escaping, Blue Diamond and Yellow Diamond return to the zoo. The two discuss Pink Diamond, Blue hanging on to the past, Yellow pushing her to move on. Seeing Pink's sisters only aids in Steven's confusion over his mother's actions. He resolves his feelings by going into Rose's room and speaking with her, or at least some idea of her, to work out how to accept what she did. Back on Earth, Steven's friends seem to mysteriously start disappearing. No one can find Lars or Sadie. These disappearances coincide with the appearance of two new gems, Aquamarine and Topaz. Aquamarine tells Steven and Connie she's looking for my dad and Connie. When Connie says she's Connie, Topaz absorbs Connie into her body, along with all the other missing dudes. Steven tries to save everyone, but when Aquamarine's powers seem too powerful for Steven, he reveals his gemstone. I'm not my dad. I'm my mom. I'm Rose Quartz. Steven departs Earth with Topaz and Aquamarine. Season five. Last season, you guys. All right, guys, we're in the final stretch. This is the most recent season, and there's a lot to unpack. When we last left Steven, he had revealed himself to be Rose Quartz in order to save his friends from Aquamarine and Topaz. Steven thought all of his friends made it off the ship, but it turns out that Lars is actually still on board. Topaz ends up being so moved by Steven and Lars' friendship that she tries to help them escape, but sadly, to no avail. Steven, where are they taking us? I don't know. Steven! Lars! Once on Homeworld, Steven is put on trial for his mother Rose Quartz's crime, shattering Pink Diamond. The Homeworld gems believe in due process, and Steven gets a defense attorney, a blue zircon, who goes up against a prosecuting yellow zircon. During the trial, Steven takes responsibility for his mother's actions by attempting to confess to the shattering. However, Steven's muddled confusion leads his defense gem to discover something very interesting about the case. There's a reason they want you to explain how you did it. Huh? It's because it doesn't make sense. Stephen learns that his mother may not be responsible for the shattering when the Blue Zircon makes a case for how Rose Quartz couldn't have done this, but a diamond definitely had the power to do so. Yellow Diamond poofs both Zircons before the trial concludes. 
As Blue and Yellow Diamond fight, Lars and Steven use the opportunity to escape. The boys crash land elsewhere on Homeworld and meet a group of off-color gems. They're basically the Island of Misfit Toys equivalent of gems on Homeworld. Lars instantly feels a connection to these misfits, as they've been hiding their whole lives. Lars basically has been too. Hiding from his baking abilities, his feelings for Sadie, the possibility of looking uncool in a situation. He's always been afraid, and these other fearful creatures make sense to him and give him the courage to finally take a stand. However, in this act of bravery, Lars is killed by an explosion while protecting the group from a pack of Robinoids. Steven revives Lars with his healing tears, but brings Lars back with a pink hue and new mystical powers, much like Lion. Steven uses Lars' pocket dimension to get back to Earth, and Lars chooses to stay behind with the off-colors to search for another way home. That really sucks that you can't jump into your own pocket space. So Steven's back on Earth, and you'd think he'd get a really warm welcome from Connie. After all, they definitely like each other more than friends. Well, Connie is apparently really hurt that Steven just took off and didn't try to work with her to save their friends. She's upset that he gave himself up and leaves with Lion. I'm hurt. No, you're not. You're safe. You're here. I'm here. We're safe. Everything's fine. It's not, though. When Steven fills Lapis and Peridot in on his adventures on Homeworld, Lapis freaks when she learns that Steven ran from the Diamonds and is a fugitive. Not wanting to get caught up in yet another war against the Diamonds, Lapis plans to leave Earth yet again. When Peridot seems hesitant about leaving their things and their home behind, Lapis raises the entire barn for space travel. But Peridot doesn't want to leave. Peridot believes that their new home is worth fighting for and remaining on, but Lapis refuses to be a casualty of the Diamonds and leaves with the entirety of the barn. Not gonna lie, I super hated Lapis in this moment. I completely understand where she's coming from, but the whole barn, dude? Leave Peridot something. Eh, at least she gets a dog or pumpkin. Later, at that doucher Kevin's party, Connie and Steven make up. I get that this doesn't seem like an important plot point, but this is a really great apology on both sides and shows their emotional growth. I don't even know what to say to you. I'm angry, I miss you, I feel like I'm out of my mind. No, you're not. Meanwhile, Lars and the Off-Colors manage to escape Homeworld and become a rebel force in their own right, working against the Homeworld gems. Steven and Connie visit Lars and his team, while Lars is mid-heroic adventure with his fancy-ass new space threads. Lars has a meltdown because Sadie is living her goddamn life, but rallies from a pep talk from Steven and Connie as they merge into Stevani. The fused best buds jump aboard Lars' experimental ship, but are shot down and get stranded on a nearby moon. While there, Stevani has some pretty trippy dreams as if she's pink dealing with the diamonds. She realizes she's in an old base of the diamonds and is able to use the old diamond tech to contact Lars to get off this base. Lars and his crew rescue Stefani, and Steven and Connie go back to Earth through Lars's head. Steven comes back and introduces Garnet to the off-colors. She comes on a little too strong and makes the off-colors feel pretty off-put because they've never heard a compliment before. It's so heartbreaking. Garnet lets the off-colors know that they're special, rare, and worthy, and tells them the story of Rose Quartz. She was our leader, and Earth was our precious home, and those who fought to save it became known as the Crystal Gem. While Lars is away in space, Steven writes to him to keep him up to date on the happenings of Beach City. Unfortunately, in his absence, the donut store is closed. Sadie's too busy with her band to keep it open herself, and with Lars gone, the whole town is donutless. But then, Steven tells Lars about the mayor's amazing transformation, from useless, unemployed city official, to ghost punk rocker, to improv enthusiast, to finally, the new owner of the donut store! Mayor Dewey even names a donut after Lars called the Pink Lars. But honestly, none of that stuff is actually important to the overarching plot of the show. Like tortilla chips are really just a vehicle for guacamole. That episode was a vehicle to reveal that Steven went to space to visit Lars, and that Lars is still struggling to repair the sun incinerator ship in order to return to Earth. In the episode Can't Go Back, Ronaldo wakes Steven up in the middle of the night to let him know about something weird. The homeworld moon base and the barn on the moon. Steven's hopeful that he and Lang can go find Lapis, and they do. Lapis has been watching everyone from Beach City from the old base. She misses all of her friends, but she's still terrified that the diamonds could swoop in on them on Earth and hurt her again. Despite his efforts, Lapis refuses to return at this time. Steven really doesn't do himself any favors by telling Lapis about his latest pink diamond dream, and is really confused why he keeps having them and feels so strongly connected to them. I can't go through that again. Would you rather be alone? I'm sorry. He decides he needs to talk to Pearl about what he saw in his vision. That's so Steven has another psychic dream, but this time it's about Pearl being the one who shattered Pink Diamond. Confused, he asks Pearl to set the record straight, but she's physically unable to do so. 
When Steven receives a text from Pearl later asking to talk, it turns out that a mysterious person was doing the texting, because Pearl can't find her phone. She asks Steven to climb inside her gem to try to find it, and he dives right in. The first version of Pearl he meets in this Pearlception is a super neurotic, type A neat freak who has all of Pearl's items organized and alphabetized inside her gem. She warns him not to look deeper for the phone in Pearl's gem, because what he finds might be pretty messy. But Steven presses on anyway. In the next tier of Pearl's gem, Steven comes across a sobbing, agonizing version of her, hiding on the beach. Steven tries to ask her what's wrong, but she simply sends him inside of her gem. There, Steven meets Pearl's war memories of herself. That version definitely has some therapy to work on, because after babbling about the gem wars, she sends him even deeper inside the gem. Once inside, Steven comes face to face with his mom, Rose Quartz. Only wait a second, she was Pink Diamond all along? We've been building up for this for seasons, and finally the truth is revealed. The taste of payoff is sweet, but that's not all. Steven learns that his mother, Pink Diamond, wanted to give up her world to the Crystal Gem so that she and Pearl could live on Earth and be free. She disguises herself as Rose Quartz and fakes her own shattering. Before she goes, she orders Pearl one last time to never speak of this to anyone. So, for my last order to you as a diamond, please, let's never speak of this again. When Steven learns the truth, the innermost Pearl hands him back Pearl's cell phone, and he zooms out of her gem. When he lands back in reality, he lets slip that his mom was Pink Diamond in front of Garnet and Amethyst. I'm sure they'll take that super well in the next episode. The revelation that Rose was actually Pink Diamond leaves Garnet devastated and forces her to split. Believing that Rose Quartz lied to them, Sapphire storms off feeling upset and betrayed. Steven and Pearl talk to Sapphire about how Pink Diamond became Rose Quartz. Pink just wanted to initially go out and explore Earth and have fun. As Pink falls in love with her world, she can't bear the thought of colonizing it. Her biggest turning point, however, was witnessing Ruby and Sapphire merge. With this new knowledge, Sapphire rushes back home. But once they're there, they discover that Ruby is left. With Ruby gone, Pearl and Sapphire are devastated at the loss of both her and Garnet. When they collapse into a puddle of tears, Steven and Amethyst have to take charge and find Ruby themselves. They search everywhere for her, but of course, Amethyst convinces Steven to play video games and eat pizza along the way. After begging her to tell him what's on her mind all day, Amethyst finally breaks down and tells Steven that she's really upset about the whole Rose Quartz Pink Diamond thing. She feels like she should only have to be responsible for herself, and so should all the other gems. But she also doesn't want all of the adults in Steven's life to constantly be dumping all of their problems on him. Initially, I kind of thought she was being a sociopath in this episode for not appearing to care about Ruby, Sapphire, or Pearl. But in reality, she was just trying to cheer Steven up and let him be a kid. So all this time, Ruby's actually been kicking it with Greg. Greg helps Ruby feel better, and Ruby, for the first time ever, thinks about herself and what she wants. Ultimately, after a little self-discovery and some cowboy attire, Ruby proposes to Sapphire. This time, being Garnet will be our decision. What do you say? Of course. To welcome Garnet back to the group, Sapphire and Ruby decide to plan a dolphin and flame-themed wedding. The only problem? All of their gem friends are still in bubbles, and it really blows to have a party without any of your homies. To cheer them up, Steven decides to free Bismuth. At first, it does not go well. I honestly thought Bismuth was going to pop every bubble in the cave, and we were going to see a full-scale Gem War sequel, Too Gem, Too Furious. Luckily, Steven manages to explain things to her and calm things down. But even with the knowledge that RQ was actually PD, Bismuth just can't shake the feeling of being unwanted at her friend's wedding. Using his badass empathy powers, Steven helps Bismuth realize that she's more than wanted at the wedding, and the whole gang gets to witness the refusion of Garnet together. Aw, that's really sweet, you guys. So now we come to the required wedding episode every show must have. Ruby and Sapphire get married, becoming Garnet once more. And by the power vested in me by the state of Delmarva, I now pronounce you Garnet! I'm still slightly concerned that Steven is a licensed efficient. Delmarva's just throwing that power at 14 year olds. Beach towns are weird, man. The good times get interrupted though when Yellow and Blue Diamond crash the wedding and invade Beach City. The corrupted cluster is unbubbled, but they choose to fight alongside the crystal gems rather than Yellow and Blue Diamond. And guess who else is back to help out? Lapis! She goes full Wizard of Oz and drops a house on Blue Diamond. The gang moves to take on Blue Diamond together. The cluster helps take down both blue and yellow before returning to its bubble, and it looks like the gems have won. But then, yellow emerges and brings out blue. Yellow then poofs Peridot and Lapis into their gems. 
In an out-of-body experience, Stephen confesses to Blue and Yellow that he slash his mom is slash was Pink Diamond. When Blue Diamond is reunited with Pink Diamond after all these years, she immediately bursts into happy tears, causing everyone around her to start sobbing too. You'd cry too if you thought your friend had been shattered by your enemies. Stephen explains to Yellow and Blue Diamond that although his mother is a part of him, he doesn't have any of her old memories. He tries to convince Yellow and Blue to help him heal all of the corrupted gems left as casualties by the Gem Wars, but it's impossible for them to heal even one of them fully without the help of White Diamond. Stephen decides that they need to travel to Homeworld to ask White Diamond to help him, even though literally everyone tells him that it's basically a suicide mission. But our little belly button buddy is determined, so he drags the gems and Connie all the way to Homeworld in his mom's hot pink leg spaceship. I bet that spaceship does like so many squats, y'all. Unfortunately, when he gets there, White Diamond immediately locks him up because, oh my God, Steven, literally everyone told you so. Did you get everything out of your system? I- Good, good. Everyone is so relieved. Welcome home, Pink. Steven wakes up after another crazy premonition dream about playing with his own Pink Pearl. When Yellow Diamond walks in on Steven juggling for her, the two have to pretend like Pink Pearl is just helping Steven get dressed. As soon as she leaves, Steven and Pearl start giggling. Be sure to keep this pearl in mind. We'll be seeing her again in the finale. Steven decides to throw a ball for the first time in 6,000 years so that everyone can try to loosen up a little and dance. But unsurprisingly, all of the diamonds and their pearls are total buzzkills. Apparently, White Diamond is the mayor from Footloose Town because no one on Homeland is allowed to dance or drink or have any kind of fun. Steven isn't thrilled about it, but decides to just go with the flow and be polite and boring. He's hoping to corner WD on the dance floor and try to convince her to save Earth after all. But when White Diamond doesn't even show up to the ball, Connie convinces him to dance with her in front of the entire ball. As soon as they fuse into Stefani, Yellow and Blue Diamond throw them in jail and poof the rest of the gems. When Stefani fails to escape and devolves back into Steven and Connie, Steven knows they need a new plan. He decides to try to intentionally enter the psychic realm to try and contact his dad and Bismuth for help. That's when this becomes the weirdest television episode of all time. Steven flies too hard to Earth and ends up landing on an island where everyone is made out of watermelon. Even the dog. He tries to talk to the watermelon people, but fun fact, watermelon don't speak English. So he has literally no idea what their whole thing is, and neither do I. Is that guy with the normal head the watermelon king? Do they kidnap Steven? Or was that some type of watermelon warrior welcome? Who's to say? Steven persists and eventually builds himself a boat to try and sail back to Beach City. He gets attacked by a shark that destroys his boat, but he managed to snuggle the heck right out of that shark, grab onto a piece of driftwood, and float to safety. In the process, he loses a hand and a foot, which he seems pretty nonchalant about, if you ask me. Who's cool with watermelon amputation? Who am I kidding? There's probably a porn about that. All right, anyway, Steven washes up on the shore of Beach City and is rescued by the lion, who takes his broken little watermelon body to Greg and Bismuth. After a series of very confusing games of Sand Pictionary, Steven manages to tell them that they need a lot of help on Homeland. When he's sure his dad understands, Steven wakes back up in reality, back in the cell with Connie. And now, we wait for their rescue. Guess we'll see what happens. In the season finale, Change Your Mind, Blue Diamond breaks Steven and Connie out of the prison tower, but is confronted by Yellow. They fight, but ultimately Yellow decides to help everyone escape with the bubbled crystal gems. White Diamond intercepts them and begins to fight as I can only describe as Voltron meets Gem and the Holograms. Like, look at this mech. Bismuth, Peridot, and Lapis Lazuli come to their aid using the repaired Diamond ships. Steven convinces Yellow and Blue to let White know that the current system is broken and that they themselves are hurting. Steven pleads for White to allow them to come together and form a plan, and White seems to super hate that and lashes out at Yellow and Blue. Steven, Connie, Lapis, Bismuth, and Peridot flee from White Diamond, and in the chaos, Steven drops the gems. In order to pull out their forms and save them, Steven fuses with Amethyst, Pearl, and Ruby and Sapphire. This was definitely a move to please fans, but whatever, it totally paid off and was super fun, especially when we got Obsidian versus the Diamond Mech. In the midst of this battle, Bismuth gifts Connie with her very own sword. Obsidian helps them make it to the top of Diamond's ship and the gang defuses and enters. Inside, White calls out all the supposed flaws in the Diamonds and Steven's friends and says that Pink brings out the worst in others in order to be the best of the worst. White does her zombification purity act on Amethyst, Garnet, and Pearl and continues to argue with Steven that he's not Pink or Rose's child, but is that gem. Then White does something truly horrifying. She removes Steven's gem. We get a Pokemon-esque gem evolution. Pink to Rose to Steven. 
This separation freaks everyone out. I need it. What is this? Where is Pink? She's gone. The pure gem side tells White that Pink is gone and proves to be a formidable opponent for White. The pure gem reemerges with Steven with a little help from Connie going all gender reversed, an officer and a gentleman. Steven calls out White Diamond for acting like a child, which seems to embarrass her, causing her to flush and releasing everyone from under her control. Once everyone gets their color back, we can confirm that the pink pearl Steven had dreamed of earlier in the season is in fact the pearl that White had been controlling. As White struggles with her flawed identity, Steven delivers the message of the show so succinctly. You know, if you just let everyone be whoever they are, maybe you could let yourself be whoever you are too. The crystal gems, the diamonds, and the off-colors all make it to Earth, where the citizens of Beach City are attending a Sadie Killer in the Suspect show. The finale is closed out with Steven getting on stage to sing the Crystal Gems theme song. Over the music, we see the corrupted gems being healed. We leave our heroes as we start every episode, on the beach, huddled together, singing a song. I don't need you to love me, I love me. But I want you to know you could know me if you change your mind. So that catches you up on all things Steven Universe, season one to season five. Let me know what I missed. Now it hasn't been confirmed if this is in fact the end of the series, but if it is, I can walk away from the finale satisfied. But hey, what do you think they need to wrap up or work out should we get a season six? Go below and let me know. For more Crash Courses, click to the left of my face or check us out on Roku and Plex. Thanks for watching. See you Space Cowboy.